So it's always more interesting to start with a real case. So this is a patient of mine back in Baltimore. Um, very nice family, no significant medical history. They brought their six months old uh, baby girl, healthy full term to their pediatrician who presented with uh, fever of 102. Urine culture was obtained appropriately and noted to have an E. coli urinary tract infection. So luckily we have a guideline on how to guide these parents and how to treat this baby. So the most recent guideline was actually in 2011. It was a panel of uh, physicians, radiologists, pediatricians, and actually one of the pediatric urologists from, um, from Stanford was on a panel. They did a meta-analysis of six major studies, both here and also in Europe, looking at how should these patients be worked up. And the group of patients they were looking at specifically were <coughs> patients with fever, positive urine culture, and also uh, these babies were from two months of age to 24 months of age, so before potty training. So basically, uh, compared to the old guideline, a uh, few things are pretty consistent, which urine should be obtained for urine analysis and culture um, prior to the start of antibiotics. Urine should be obtained via either catheter or suprapubic taps. Uh, this, I know, is probably very difficult in a general pediatrician's practice. Um, it's hard to hold down a baby and place a catheter. So I think, at least for me, as long as it's a single organism and a good number of organisms, I would consider that to be a positive urine culture. And then, of course, you would treat according to the sensitivity. And also the guideline states that febrile infants with positive urine culture should at least obtain a baseline renal bladder ultrasound. And one of the major changes from their previous guideline was that VCUG should actually not be obtained. Um, of course, um, they also recommend that no more prophylactic antibiotics after a good treatment course of antibiotics. And the parents should be counseled that they should seek medical attention if the baby does not respond appropriately. So of course, this generates a lot of controversies among the general pediatricians and also pediatric urologists, mainly because of the rationale for not obtaining that first um, that VCUG after that first febrile UTI, and also um, the question of should we be doing prophylactic antibiotics in these little babies who can't really tell us if they're having any pain or discomfort. So the rationale from the AAP panel was that the proportion of infants with high-grade reflux based on their meta-analysis was actually very small and they didn't find any benefits after looking at these uh, various studies, the six studies that they had looked at, that there was no significant benefits in adding the prophylactic antibiotics. Interestingly, so the guideline was put out in 2011 and there was a recent uh, JAMA publication in 2016 where they looked at for over 400 children with febrile infections and 94% were actually their first febrile infections. They, most of them were young, not potty trained, and they found that 78% actually have some degree of vesicoureteral reflux. In addition, I found this study to be really interesting and also how I treat my patients is that 8% actually develop renal scar, especially in those who had delayed treatment uh, for greater than 72 hours. So I think at this point, if you have a baby who comes in, suspect a UTI, probably get a good urine sample, send them out with some sort of antibiotics, because it does take two to three days for the final culture to come back. And at that point, it's then it's easier to uh, treat accordingly, can always change the antibiotics, and hopefully to avoid this 8% of renal scarring in these very young infants. So let's go back to our, uh, our baby girl. So she underwent a course of treatment according to the recent guidelines. Her renal bladder ultrasounds were normal and she had her routine follow-up with her pediatrician. She did very well for a few months and three months later, she presented to the ER again with a high fever of 102. Um, the urine was cath appropriately. Again, this show another E. coli infection. And at that point, I was called by the pediatrician and I recommend the VCUG. I don't know how many of you have seen a VCUG. Basically, it's a regular x-ray except a catheter goes into the bladder, contrast instilled and a few different shots to see if any of the contrast goes up into the 
uh, kidneys. And as you can tell from this um, x-ray, she's got bilateral urinary reflux, relatively high grade, grade three or grade four. Of course, at this point, parents were super upset. They feel that uh, this is something horrible. There might be some sort of kidney damage. This is up to the Northeast where everybody Googles and they bring up all the guidelines to show you how this was not caught in the first place. Um, so luckily, we do have something else out there to help guide the parents. So with uh, this is probably a study that you guys are pretty aware of. It was published in New England Journal of Medicine. It's a first randomized uh, trial looking at these children with, uh, who had a febrile infection diagnosed with urinary reflux. So the RIVER trial was a double-blind randomized prospective study, which as you know, it's very hard to get any of these prospective studies through the NIH. There's just not a lot of funding in the pediatrics world. Um, so the study looked at, they divide the children up according to uh, febrile infection, found to have urinary reflux, all sorts of grade, grade one to grade four. Grade five was actually excluded from the study because it was felt that grade five patients had uh, a very abnormal anatomy and shouldn't be included in this, uh, this uh, prophylactic antibiotic study. So the starting planning started in 2005, uh, patient exit in 2013, and um, after a full two years of follow-up, so I was actually involved in this study at, I was the, um, the co-PI at Hopkins, and the, uh, one of my mentors actually was one of the main PIs who started the whole concept of looking at plus minus prophylactic antibiotics for these children. So uh, there were five core sites, and these patients were followed pretty closely by um, nurse practitioners, study coordinators, where they actually go to their house, um, measure how much antibiotics they took, because we know compliance is, it's pretty bad. I know because I am terrible with antibiotics, and I'm definitely not very good with my four kids either. So, but we had a way to go to the house, we measure how much it's, is in each container. Kids either get their uh, sugar uh, placebo or they got the, uh, the Bactrim. All the kids must have to have a positive urine culture and also show that they have urinary reflux. So we recruited a total of over 600 uh, children. It was a pretty massive effort. Most of them were girls, which we kind of know just from a day-to-day -day practice that this is much more common in girls. And that's something that we see a lot too, where um, circumcision does protect these boys who are already prone to getting urinary tract infections. And more than 90% of them were, this was their first febrile infection. And most of them were Caucasian babies with few Hispanics and African-Americans were uh, only 5% of the study population. E. coli was the most common infection, as we know, and the, uh, those children who presented with um, non-E. coli infection were actually sicker children with higher grade of reflux. Baseline data, uh, this is probably one of the largest prospective study, as we stated before. It's a good representation of the, these children who present with mainly grade three reflux, which is the most common type of reflux that we see. And um, we know that boys are pretty uncommon. Um, as long as they're circumcised, it does offer some sort of benefit during that first year of life. And most of these patients actually had a normal renal ultrasound. So having a normal renal ultrasound does not mean that you don't have urinary reflux. And initial cortical scarring on these super duper sensitive nuclear skin actually was pretty uncommon, but it, it happened in both the high grade and low grade refluxers. The study was basically looking at um, the difference between recurrence of urinary tract infection in children who were on a sugar pill versus those who were placed on prophylaxis. And secondary endpoints, we were looking at time to the first recurrence and also the rate of renal scarring. So what we noted was that about uh, 100 children had some sort of recurrence and 70% of them were febrile recurrence. So you can't miss reflux uh, in children who actually don't present with any fever. And most of those uh, recurrence happen in children who were on placebo 
And also when, look, when we looked at the time for recurrence, it was about 100 days for children who were on the sugar pills and 300 days in the treatment group. So prophylaxis does do something for these children. So this is probably the, uh, the most important graph uh, from this whole study was that prophylaxis reduced the risk of recurrence by almost 50%. And it also prolonged the interval between symptomatic uh, febrile infections in these children. So in conclusion, um, I think we have some sort of guideline with these uh, young babies who come in with febrile infections. And uh, based on the river study, that the magnitude of treatment effect should really uh, make us think twice about should we or should we not put these children on prophylactic antibiotics. In addition, there is a constant talk between the world of pediatric uh, urologists and also the AAP guideline panel on should we come up with another uh, updated guideline in terms of imaging studies for these children. And also, you know, once you have a positive finding, should we put these kids on low dose antibiotics? Let's go back to our case. Uh, so actually, uh, the parents selected to undergo open ureteral reimplant for their high grade reflux. This was done when the baby was 12 months old. What I find in my practice is that most parents um, want what's the best thing for their baby. And a lot of parents actually don't want to have that VCUG every year, which I don't blame them. It's a pretty terrible study between the cathing and the radiation exposure, and also who is doing your study. Open reimplant has a very high success rate. It's close to 98%. That's her scar, which is a tiny little one inch scar. She went home on post-op day number one and had a negative VCUG a few months after the reimplant. So um, I moved here from Hopkins this summer. I think I bought the hurricane because <laughs> it happened a, a week after I got here and I also bought you guys the snow and the ice. Um, so, but anyway, I also bought part of my study here, so I still have faculty appointment at Hopkins because I've, I've been following my patients there and also uh, doing my, you know, study on the GU and GM microbiome, looking at these children because as we know, all babies are in diapers, but not all babies get sick. And also we know that embryologically that the GI and the GU tract share the same pathway until something happened at the end of the first trimester where the, G, the GU system is up in the front, the GI system is, is in the back. So um, basically, you know, I still have my patients at Hopkins I'm following. I'm working with the, uh, the pathology team there and I'm hope, hopefully I'll get my study down here and we can start recruiting some of the patients down here as well. All right, so uh, I only have two questions and hopefully it'll be pretty easy. So the first question is, what is one of the major changes associated with the recent AAP guideline on children who present with fibril urinary tract infections? No urine culture should be done. Yep, perfect. Um, yes, VCUG, which is the, the biggest uh, question that we face every day from the parents and the pediatricians. Second question, what was the major finding with the river regarding the addition of prophylactic antibiotics? Great, so let's go through each uh, choices. So what was the major funding with the river study? These are uh, the, ch this is the, that big prospective study on febrile urinary tract infections. And as you know, most of them were girls, over 500 were girls out of 600 children recruited. And um, in the boys who were, who also were in the study were actually, uh, UTI was much more common in boys who are not circumcised. Regarding option B, um, renal ultrasound is actually a pretty poor study to pick up urinary reflux unless you have very high grade reflux. And then C, so the study basically looked at plus minus prophylactic antibiotics. And according to this study, prophylaxis actually cut down the risk of uh, recurrence and also time to recurrence by 50%. So C is the correct answer. Great, that's the end of my talk. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.